This seems to be a common sight in China, a Chinese EV just blowing up. Now, obviously, I'm not a physicist or a scientist. I'm just a retired English gentleman. And is this spontaneous combustion? Some people say yes, some people say no. Anyhow, it happens. Does it happen to other EVs? I can guess so. But quite often in China, you would see this along the highway. These self-driving EVs where the computers are not good enough and that LiDAR and the radar and all this, who meant to um, find out what's happening with the traffic so you can sit back and relax and drive, it seems to be also a common sight nowadays. But let me show you something new. This, I can guess, is a taxi driver who has just woken up from a little nap when the police have asked him to move on. Everything is okay, everything is dandy, until this happens. The car, the Chinese electric car, cannot even see a car in front of him. But it continues, it doesn't end there. This driver, I can guess, is desperately trying to control the car and the computer is just saying, no, no, and even goes into the side of the road. Then it comes to another traffic light, cannot see the other taxi in front of him. Kaboom. If there's any good thing about this, well, it didn't catch fire, which is obviously a good thing. So there's a lot of hoo-ha at the moment with the Chinese EV imports to Europe and to America. And Europe and America want to put a tariff on these cars. And I completely agree with it. On the Chinese state media, they're saying, oh, it's unfair, profitability, green energy, all that kind of malarkey. But here's the thing. A Mercedes, a Toyota, a BMW, a Ford, when it comes to China, it has to pay a tariff. And this tariff is considerably high, round about 50%, which I discussed on one video before, and, I repeat, and VAT. So we're getting up to like 70% of the cost of the car. So why can't Europe put a tariff on um, these cars coming in from China? And why can't America put tariffs on these cars in the China, that coming from China? Because this is it's exactly what China does to um, us, you could say, that you have a VW. Well, no, not VW. Let's cancel that. Let's say you have an Audi and you want to sell it in China, yeah, you can, by all means, yeah, get all the paperwork, etc., all the licenses done and dusted, but you will have to pay a higher tariff. So that's even. It's not one side for China saying, oh, we're developing. Yeah, you are developing, but you're also developed. So you're milking that. Now, way back in 1979, again, I have covered this quite a few times on my, on my channel, is that way back when China opened its doors to global trade, um, the West really helped China, saying, 
there you go, no tariffs. Join the local or the international community. Come on. And to help you, we will give you no tariffs on your goods. Wow, fantastic. This still happens today. And now China is complaining that if something is brought in from the West to China, there's a tariff. But anything which comes out of China, there's a very little tariff. Now with these EVs, as China is developed in a lot of the um, place, it is just fair. And I don't get it why China is crying like a little baby. Your comments below is just an interesting subject. And if I was going to buy a EV, if I had no choice, I would actually buy a Tesla. Why? Yesterday I did watch a video related to the distance of how far one of these cars can go. And there was a race between a Tesla, well, not a race, an endurance, you could say, um, Tesla, a Polestar, a Mercedes and BMW and a BYD. The one who actually won this race was the Tesla. So um, you may agree, you may disagree, but if you're going long distance, the Tesla's the king of the road for that not the BYD, which is Chinese, not the German, the Mercedes or the BMW. And I don't know where Polestar comes from. God bless to all. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye. It's all food for thought.